Hello and thank you for joining me here today on the Mad About You YouTube channel. My name is Madeline and um, you've come to talk about knitting, sewing, crochet and other crafty endeavours and um, this is introduction number two for today. <laughs> it's Friday the 5th of February 2021 and I am recording from my parents place in Queensland, Australia with a reluctant co-host just down here. He's the family cat and his name is Harley and I'm sure he will make an appearance at some point. Uh, this is year three, year four of the podcast and this is episode number 35 and I had a new, a few new subscribers recently so um, I thought I'd just give a quick introduction here at the beginning about who I am and what's happening. So, um, like I said, my name's Madeline. I am in my late 20s. This is, I'm turning 29 in a couple of weeks and this is the last year of my 20s. Um, I came into crafting, I guess, when I was about six or so. My grandma taught me how to knit and then that never really stuck. Um, and then... When I was at university, I taught myself to crochet. One of my mum's um, work friends was a crocheter and I wanted something as a, like a positive procrastination sort of tool. No, that's, no, not for you. Um, so anyway, I learned to crochet. You just, anyhow, sorry, distracted. Um, so I learned to crochet and then 2016, I think, or my interest was peaked maybe in 2014, 15. A few of the crochets that I followed online had started to knit socks using the Winnick Mum um, Super Sock tutorial. Um, and in 2016, I my then partner was um, overseas for work and I decided that I was gonna learn how to knit. And I did, so I taught myself to knit again. And I remember um, really struggling casting on for this sock and I was so tempted to mail the wool and the needles to my mum, who is a knitter, so she could um, so she could cast on for me. Anyway, we got there eventually. I sorted it out, and then basically from there, my infatuation with the fibre arts just exploded. I think I had bought hand dyed yarn um, before I even knew how to knit socks, just because it was so beautiful, and that. Dyer, the first ever hand dyed yarn I ever bought was um, from Circus Town at Handmaid and the dyer's name is Hannah. And Hannah and her family have just um, settled in South Australia and they have been travelling the world. I mean, sorry, they've been tra travelling Australia in their caravan for the last, I can't remember, like 10 months or so and um, Hannah's about to start dyeing and reinvigorate Circus Tonic, so that's really exciting. Anyway, um, if you have had a chance to dip through my back catalogue, I... Um, used to travel a lot for work and at the moment I'm in the process of leaving my job. I worked in the logistics field for 10 years and um, last year had an epiphany that I didn't want to live away from my family anymore and I actually wanted to um, work with people in a way that I wasn't before and I had kind of always had this idea in the back of my head that I would, um... no please don't ruin my book, that I would study teaching and become a history and English teacher, which is essentially what I'm doing. I start uni in three weeks. So that's kind of mostly a bit about me. About 18 months ago, or nearly two years really, um, I had a significant breakdown in relationship and that helped me to re-evaluate what was kind of important in my life and that came down to family. My job had kept me away from home for 11 and a bit years. So, um, I live in Queensland again, which is lovely. I just got back from road, main roads. I actually don't know what they're called here. I think it's main roads or department of transport. And I um, now have a license that's on its way and I'm going to change my car registration. So me becoming a Queenslander is really, it's really happening. And I feel really good about it. That's what's important. So anyway, um, thank you for enabling me to talk about myself just a little bit before we continue with me talking about myself some more. I really think he's going to be too distracting. Um, <laughs> let me know if next time you want me to kick him out. His name is Harley, if I haven't already mentioned that. Um, and he's a Burmese. He is 17 soon. Are you 17? 
when did we get you? I know how old I was. I was 12. Yeah, 17. Shit. Anyway, moving on. Um, so... Oh, you want to cuddle and you're sitting right on top of my projects. We're going to move on to works in progress now. Yeah. So, I have a work in progress, which I cast on... Um, back in July last year and it is my granny stripe blanket. So basically I was connect collecting mini skeins of yarn particularly from my favorite little yarn shop in Victoria called Little Woolly or Little Woolly Makes um, which is Julie Harrison. She's the proprietor of that shop and I learnt to knit when I first discovered her. She had a little yarn studio in her garage um, where I was like posted for work in Victoria and I used to go do her crochet craftenoons and did a few crochet classes with her um, and then she her studio and her garage grew so large that she um, now has a shop in Hastings, Victoria which I unfortunately have not had a chance to visit yet and if I ever make it back down to the Mornington Peninsula I will be there with a heart in a in a flash. Anyway um, in 2018, I subscribed to her like mini sock, mini skein mystery collection thing. Um, and so I, I don't know how many I ended up with, but I chose my favorite 22 and wound them into this magic cake. Um, and if you want to look for a good tutorial on the magic cake, um, my project page on Ravelry where I'm Mad Bell um, for this project has a link to the one that I used. Um, so there's 22, I think they're 10 gram minis in here. They might actually be five grams now that I think about it. I'm not entirely sure. I could do the maths, but I'm recording on my phone and I need a calculator. So anyway, you don't care about that. You care about the blanket, I hope. I cast on late last, oh, sorry, in about July and it got maybe like two rows. I think I'd done like to this blue. Barely any love. Um, I haven't measured it exactly, but I've laid it against the double bed here at my folks' place, and it's about the same size as a double bed, Australian double bed mattress. Um, so it's quite long, and I have knit, uh, I've crocheted, sorry, maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten rows since we spoke, or since I last showed this on the podcast. Now, I actually have crocheted more, but I realised I'd make, I was making a mistake, um, on the ends here so I've actually ripped back but if you can see I I did choose a little bit of color management but it was really hard I just chose them based on um, the little minis wound up as they were so um, the way I was hoping for it to do would be like two stripes per color which for the most part has worked except for this light pink color where I got two and a bit stripes so yeah I was like two and maybe like a third um but i guess it's just easy because it's already all magic knotted together and i just the new colorway happens and i have wanted like it might be once or twice to do some yarn management but i haven't um just because it's all done i don't have to think and it's in really good knitting while i watch tv of an evening which i've already planned my reading watching listening segment but i've been watching <laughs> We were watching I'm a Celebrity Australia, which was cool. And I'm really happy Abby Chatfield, Abby Chatfield won. Um, I like her a lot. She's really funny. Um, and also been recently watching The Amazing Race. So this has kind of been my of an evening knit. Crochet, sorry. It's that so ingrained. I would call myself a knitter primarily. Um, and it's just stuck in there. Anyway, I have been using, um, I think they were from Say Little Hen. And, um, oh gosh, it's in here somewhere. I've lost it. The cutest little stitch progress keeper. It's a Hermione Granger little charm. Oh, I have a progress keeper in here. I can show you how much I've done since you last saw it on the podcast. There. So all of, from there upwards. So it's pretty good effort. I was um, procrastinating my knitting essentially and I had picked this up. I don't really have any other projects on the go that aren't scrappy projects that are here with me. I have a few that I just left into storage because I, th 
couple weeks ago when I was packing up my apartment in Canberra, I just didn't have the capacity to sit down and think, what do I actually want to take with me? And it was just kind of all too much. So I brought, I packed the scrappy projects and that's about it really. So, um, finished objects. I finally have a finished object. This is a Circus Tonic bag. This is from before when I sewed my own project bags. Now, when I say finished, I mean I cast this off at about 9 p.m. yesterday. It's like 1 o'clock on the Friday. So 9 p.m. Thursday night, I haven't blocked it, haven't finished weaving in ends or anything, but I'm so excited that it's finally done. So my advent um, kit was from Louis and Lola, which is a Tasmanian dye company. I bought two, one from Love and Speckles, which is Tarina, and she's in WA, I believe. And then there is the Louie and Lola ones in WA, oh, sorry, in Tasmania. I decided to knit the circus, um, sorry, the Curious Handmade Habitation Throw as my little advent, um, um, as my advent pattern. Um, and I'm really happy with the finished object. I am saving it for if I have a kid, in the future which I would like to do at some point if I don't have children then it'll get gifted but it's a really I think it's a really nice like cot sorry like a pram size blanket though it does have eyelets which I'm not sure how great they are for children anyhow it is done so I started this um I think on like the second or third of December I can't remember I started later than I had hoped to I've woven in about two thirds of the ends I think um and it it's on the bias construction. So you start here and you work your way across, slowly increasing, increasing, increasing till you get to this point. And now I read the pattern wrong. You're supposed to knit 45% of your yarn and then start decreasing, but I didn't, I knit 50, which is not good because I ran out of yarn. So then we start the decreasing, 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 decreasing. And then these two are a little bit not so great. And then this final color is actually day 25 the whole skein I've wound off well basically I just wound the skein and then knit from it I haven't weighed it so I don't know how much I use but I would assume it's about 10 grams which is what I use for everything else so um I did the eye bind off and most of the ends like I said the ends from here onwards I'm not so there's one two three four five six seven ends that need to be woven in which won't take too long I didn't bring my blocking mats or pins with me so I don't know if I will block this just yet um but I will take some measurements and then I probably will block it at some point let's be honest so yeah anyway I'm really stoked that's finally done I had said to myself I really wanted to finish it um well I wanted to finish it in December and then that didn't happen and then I wanted to finish it in January and I just moved here and it was a little bit much and true to me in real life I just the procrastination bug hit me like I finished I had two sections to go I managed the second last and then that final section like literally took me two hours last night not even to finish and I could have had it done days ago I just couldn't make myself do it so I was just working on the crochet granny stripe so that's it that's only my current works in progress Oh, sorry, that's my, I usually do FOs first. I don't know why I didn't. Anyway, doesn't matter. It's finished. I mean, not finished, 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 but for the most part, it's done. And that's, I'm very excited. Do you have that just like cleanse the palette? I do have something else I would like to cast on, but I'll have a sip of water. Because... So, I've had this gain of yarn for about two years. I bought in a D stash, I think when I lived in Sydney. So when would that, 2018, so nearly three years. It's from Kate Celine. It's just a four ply sock yarn, I think like 75% Nile, uh, Merino, 25% Nylon. Pretty cool. <sighs> Excuse me, gosh darn it. So I've had this for a while and I was just gonna cast on a vanilla pair of socks. I thought, okay, I can just knit a pair two at a time. I only wound one ball. I was thinking I could take one from the center, one from the end. But this year, I think on my little, like make a lid, make is knit two pairs of socks. And one I wouldn't mind knitting on, I wouldn't mind learning to knit with DPNs. 
I don't know why I want to do this to myself because I'm really comfortable either on a nine inch circular or on magic loop, but I think I'd like to do the DPNs. So this may get cast on soon or like, which is realistically probably what's going to happen. I'll just crochet, keep crocheting, work my way through that magic keg and then see how we go. So that's it for actual productive knitting. I have got some stash enhancement to share. Now I may have shared these already last time or I may have held off because I was waiting for the other parcel, but I put in a quick little order in the Boxing Day sale, which was seems like weeks ago. I guess it kind of was, it's a month and a bit. From Stitchcraft and Wizardry, another um, local yarn business in Australia, in Western Australia. And I'm, these things keep happening in my life. I'm, yeah. so I spend a lot of time in Rockingham in Western Australia for work. I can't say that I really enjoyed the experience, but that was because I, um, I lived in a particular place. I didn't have any transport and there wasn't really anything that suited my interest. And when I did hire a car, I would drive a couple of hours or like to Fremantle to check out the yarn shops there and then a couple of hours around to, to find others. Anyway, this shop has opened up in Rockingham, which is just, I'm really happy for the knitters of Rockingham, but I'm a little bit devastated for me. It's like five years too late, but anyway, that's fine. They make beautiful yarn and things and you can mail order. So this is the gold finger base it's extra fine merino nylon and gold stellina and it's called 450 from paddington i can't tell you what the reference for that is it's probably a harry potter one and i've missed it anyway the color is 450 from paddington and it's pretty cool i also bought birthday fun at the wonkers and this is on house elf liberty base which is definitely a harry potter reference and it's 85 percent super for super wash extra fine merino 15 percent nylon so that's those two did i buy with a plan no because 2020 was supposed to be the year of not buying anything and then a freaking global pandemic hit and i decided to leave my job and i just went screw it if i want something i'm gonna buy it and they spoke to me so i bought them Similarly, Molly from a homespun house in Germany decided to offer free shipping worldwide. So what did I do? Spent far too many euro on a shawl kit. It's called the Color Craze Shawl. And to be honest, I don't know if I'm going to make it, but I've never, I've only ever had one skein of a homespun house yarn. And I got that from my friend Ricky in a fiber swap. But I thought this kind of opportunity was too good to miss and it looked awesome. Now that I think about it, I live in Queensland. So knitting a massive shawl with mohair is probably not a good idea. But I can figure it's probably can't hurt to have these in stash to use later. Or maybe I just say screw it and make it and go on holidays in cold places. It's just both work. So um, this is the fresh, oh, sorry, it's the mohair lace base. And it's fresh sheets colorway so it's 70 percent kid mohair 30 percent silk 420 meters um, and 50 grams so i got 100 grams of that two skeins i have two skeins of passenger which is on the cashmere cashmere merino fingering base 70 percent superwash merino 20 percent cashmere 10 percent nylon So I think this goes with this mostly and it just mutes the colors. And then there's 10 minis on the, oh sorry, it's the Petals collection on the soft sock base, which is merino and nylon. And I just bloody love these colors. I, I can't even, like, I don't want to knit with them. I love them so much, which is just, it's just stupid. Like, no logic, but it's like a, a bouquet of really beautiful colors. I quite like this one. I really like the combination of like the gray. It's like a light gray. It's definitely a light gray. Then that's more of a silver. And then this pink, which I have seen a similar color from the Three Mums Yarn Ladies. I have a mini that's a similar color from them. Um, so yeah, will this be a color craze? Who knows? But 
the home is fun house. I now have one, two, three, four, five full skins and ten minis. But I haven't actually bought any yarn yet this year. I'm going to break that today or tomorrow because Jacqueline C. Slack um, bought, uh, sorry, had a birthday sale. She's my favorite size inclusive designer. I've not, I'm yet to knit anything of hers, but I love following her on Instagram and I have wax lyrical on here sometime late last year. So if you'd like to go back to listen to that ramblings, feel free. Anyhow, it was Jacqueline's birthday. She turned 32 and she had a 32% off sale on her, on her patterns on Ravelry and Payhip. So I bought two. One I'm certain I'm gonna knit and I'm gonna buy the yarn for probably this afternoon because I got a Christmas gift voucher from my lovely friend Robin. So I'm not, the gift voucher will color the yarn. I just have to pay for the postage. So that means I've got through all of February without buying anything, which is not a hard and fast thing. I just have such a large and beautiful stash that it would be really silly for me not to knit with it. When is that ever stopped me in the past? Zero. Never. Anyway, it's just a little thing from like for me. <sighs> oh dear. Okay. I think it's time for blather. So this is a segment where I basically just talk about random stuff. I've recently started talking about what I'm reading, watching and listening, and I've written some notes down too, so it's not stupid and I can't sit here and I can't think of anything. Um, and then I've got some idle chit chat for the end. Um, so, reading. I'm still going with The Space Between, which is a book by Melbourne writers Michelle Andrews and Zara McDonald and they are the creators of the hit podcast Shameless which I think I have mentioned on here before. They're in their mid-20s and they've written a book. It's it's pretty cool. It's um it's uh, okay I quite admire Jamila Rizvi who's another Australian I guess media personality and journalist. She's a journalist for like First and foremost, I think, and where her review is, the space between manages to be a warm and wise, silly and soulful, all at the same time, a solid swipe right on the millennial experience. To be honest, I bought this book to support the Shameless Girls because I listen to their podcast every week. They have two episodes, an In Conversation, where they talk to a prominent person in the Australian pop culture zeitgeist, or um, mostly, I think, or well, mostly Australians. To be honest, they had Ruby Core. Um, a couple months ago, like they have had international people, um, but mostly Australians. And then they have a, like a pop culture sum up of the week on a Thursday. So it's written for, it's like the space between, it's like in your twenties and I'm at the end of my twenties. So I thought, is it going to be relevant? But yes and no, some things completely not in other things. Yes. And it's broken up into a couple of segments. So there's like love, ambition, mind and body and voice. And I've just finished um, mind and body and I'm onto part four, which is voice. And it's just been really good. Sorry, I haven't really talked greatly about it, but I'm really enjoying it, um, which I didn't think that I would necessarily. It's made me laugh. It's made me cry. It's made me reassess a lot of things, which been doing a lot of in the last 12 months anyway so you know it's pretty on trend for me so I've been doing that um now watching last time I recommended Bridgerton I've had a few more thoughts I, I still really love it but I've had there's some interesting comments between me and another viewer um who saw things in a different perspective to me on the last episode so that was really interesting thank you if you're watching again for that dialogue I quite enjoyed that and it made me think about things differently. This time I want to recommend some um, other YouTubers who um, have been producing content. I've got two recommendations. Uh, so I've been watching Stacey of the Stress Knits podcast. I can never remember if she stress knits or stressed knits. I can't remember. Anyway, Stacey L. Stone um, on online, but it's the Stress Knits podcast. Um, and she has released an episode for January, um, and I'm a patron 
for her I support her on Patreon just on like the lowest level but I've really enjoyed a lot of Stacey's work in the last I guess maybe like 12 months since I found her and this time it was like I got a lot out of it she said she's going to this year focus on not making because it's popular and she's gonna make because she wants to and she spent a lot of the time when she first learned to knit wanting people's approval and to knit what was on trend and and whatnot and it's really not been conducive for her long term and she's like I have all these sweaters which are beautiful and stunning but I'm they're not me so if I'm gonna put the effort into knitting then I want to do something that is me and I really appreciated her honesty and I thought that was really great and to be honest like I knit stuff because it's on trend or I join into things like the West Knits Mystery Knit Along even though I know I don't like Mystery Knit Alongs and then don't end up doing it because it's not me. So anyway, uh, give Stacey a watch. She is really interesting. She has an adorable pug puppy Esther, or not really puppy, a pug Esther and a daughter. Um, gosh, I've completely blinked. Esther and Eliza and her husband Doug, who doesn't start very often. And then um, Australian wines. There is a newish Aussie podcaster out there, Books, Hooks and Yarns on YouTube. I will pop a link down below. Um, Australian living in Melbourne and we chat a bit um, online, which is really nice. I found her through mine. I think she might have mentioned me and then I found her. And anyway, it's really lovely. We have um, quite enjoyed those conversations. So that's been lovely and listening to podcast so an actual podcast audio original the og of the podcast armchair expert with dax shepherd and monica padman um and i don't have a particular episode that i'd like to recommend but i just love them they can be a bit long hot tip listen on 1.5 speed um that i quite enjoy those and I uh, before had a really massive library that I hadn't listened to and then when I did my drive or basically I came back to Canberra started like packing what I needed to pack waited around for removalists a lot and then drove from 16 hours 15 hours from Canberra to where my parents live um so it was a lot of time for listening and when you listen to them on 1.5 or 2 it goes really quickly so I'm basically up to date not of everything like I'm not interested in some of the people that they talk to so I don't watch those. I don't listen to those particular ones. But for the ones that I am interested in, I'm completely up to date. And like today, I re-listened to one with Glennon Doyle, America Ferreira. Um, and Adam Grant was a really interesting one. He's an organisational psychologist. I think he's been on twice now. Anyway. What's wrong, cat? You want some love? I've already brushed him. And fed him and, you know, cleaned the kitty litter. I'm acing this, like cat parenting thing he's 17 like he is very low maintenance um okay so idle chit chat i did write notes this is the first time i've been prepared so let's hope that i'm prepared for the rest of the year not the first time ever just the first time in a long time so i'm enrolled in uni which i think i had spoken about last time classes are all selected um and i start late february with o week and then first of march classes start so my first class is on the second because I'm at the uni Tuesdays and Thursdays and I'm working part time for my current employer. I will be working for them, I think, Mondays and Wednesdays. Fridays is a completely free day. And my plan, all being well, will be that I'll still get up early. But instead of going to the gym, I'm going to go and either walk the national park or go to the beach, have a swim and just cleanse the week. Like go start into the weekend refreshed. And I find the salt water just really soothing and does that for me. So that's the, the rough plan. We'll see how well that goes. So I am working um, for my soon to be, for my current employer, who I'm going to start working part time for. I'm working for them. It's a new job. I don't particularly like it. But I think if I do it right, it will have a big impact on the community of logisticians as a whole. Um, and it's a, it's a really important job, which kind of annoys me because I'd love to half ass it, but that's not going to be an option. And I don't really half ass anything. So, yeah. It'll be interesting. We'll see how we go. And ultimately, at the end, the end of the day, it's just money. Like, it's helping me pay my board and my mortgage and all that stuff. So, that's all fine. Um, 
gentleness and making. So kind of what Stacey was saying in the Stress Knits podcast, I felt a lot of pressure. I guess I had a bit of a crisis last week and I posted on my um, Mad About You Instagram. I was like, uh, I'm like looking at my stash and I'm completely overwhelmed. I really haven't been knitting much. Do I need to cancel the podcast? Like, do I sell my stash? What do I do? And I'd spoken to a couple of like my in it sounds terrible because I consider my friends or Instagram real friends, but like I'd spoken to some people I know in real life, in person, my in-person friends. I'd spoken to a couple of those and they were just like, just be gentle. And then I had a session with my psychologist this week and we were talking about the whole transition from my current employment to being a student and deprogramming but the institutionalization that I have and, and whatever. And, and I'd said to her, I just really want to be gentle as I navigate this new horizon, new life, whatever. And she said to me, that's really good. Like, let's put some steps in place to make that happen. So then I walked away from that and I went, I need to be gentle with myself while crafting too. Like, don't have to make 15 jumpers and whatever. Like, if I am knit for five minutes, that has just been a win for me in the last couple of months because I've been so overwhelmed with real life that I didn't have capacity for anything else. And it's scary when something that used to bring you so much joy doesn't help anymore. Like, it's, I can't bring myself to do it. But then also I think that that's, a, that's the realisation point, that something's being neglected and it's not that I'm neglecting the knitting, but I need to take back and take stock of what's happening around me because the things that I usually do that I take enjoyment out of or whatever aren't, I can't do it. I can't bring myself to do it. And there's no pressure. It's just bloody knitting. Like, read a book instead. So I started reading books again. So it's nice, but I'd rather be crafting because stash. Um, and then what else? I oh, I had one thing. So I said that I'd started the Curly Girl Method and I said it's by Linda Morrissey. Now, not untrue. That is true. Linda Morrissey has put all the information together for the current Curly Girl Method, which is very, um, you have like the purists who are like, no, this, 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 and this. And if you deviate and you're in one of their Facebook groups and they're like, you're wrong, you're not Curly Girl Method. Oh, I washed my hair today. You can't really see because the light's not that great. I had the window open, but there was too much like glare and whatever. So it's not as curly as it could, as it has been or whatever, but you don't, you win some, you lose some, I try something different. Linda Morrissey did not figure out how to take care of curls. Pretty sure black women and people of colour have been doing that for fucking millennia. Centuries, thousands, hundreds of years, whatever. I'm going to be a history teacher. Good Lord, I better get my time units of measure sorted. But anyway, so she's like popularised it and taught Caucasian people how to deal with their curls. Essentially, no sulfates, no, like most, there's certain alcohols you can have because they're less drying than others or whatever. Curls need moisture which these people have known for freaking ever, but we don't listen as a whole. I'm grossly generalizing here. Don't listen to black people or people of color about stuff. And then when a white person does it, it's like, oh, fantastic. You pioneered something. So I just want to make a correction on here. She did not decide how to take care of girls as a whole, but she popularized it for white girls like me who know what to do. So that's that. I guess it's kind of an ending on a negative note. So let's change that. Um, overall, I'm feeling very positive about 2021. I have a gentle list of knitting things I would like to make. I have got personal goals in terms of my study. I am a bit of an introvert. Which surprised me that I have a bloody YouTube channel. Like, this is vulnerable. Not really on a grand scheme of things because I don't know a lot of you. But when, like, people from my, that I know in person add me on Instagram or my crafty one or watch this and I get a little bit apprehensive. But that's okay. Um, I've reached out to a few different people on, like, podcast meetup groups. Someone um, posted on one of the, you just farted and that's gross. Oh, cat. 
sorry. Um, I'm going to meet up with someone who's doing a similar degree to me. Um, and then just some random person who was on a thing being like, I've just moved to where I live and I don't really know anyone and I'd like to make some friends. And I was like, hey, I don't know anyone either. Let's meet up for a coffee. And if, it, if we gel, we gel. If we don't, you know, what have we lost? $4.50 for a coffee. Um, so yeah, I'm feeling pretty optimistic. I, my heart absolutely goes out to the people who are doing it less great than in Australia right now. Like we have probably some active COVID cases. We have, Western Australia has been plunged into lockdown. Anyway, I'm not going to get into the politics of that. Their premier has been very interesting. Um, and they're also on fire. So like the beginning of last year, Australia was completely on fire. This time, Western Australia is on fire. So I feel really sad, um, but hopeful overall. I feel really blessed actually. This morning I went for a big walk through the national park and you stop at this place called Hell's Gates and it's just beautiful. And like I have a, a great affinity for the ocean. Part of my job is with water, like with the ocean and and that's one of the things I'm going to miss. And I just kind of sat there and I did meditate when I got to, I guess it's the halfway point because it's the turn, turn around, but you sit there on this like at Hell's Gates and just looked all around me and there's like this massive body of water that was just moving so beautifully, but rough. And it's kind of like life. It's like a washing machine. There's a rough and tumble there. There's bits and it's cruisy and you just like, go through the waves and it's just super simple or like you get to the top and it's like there's a bit of a peak and it's like oh shit is it gonna be like un 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 unraveling or do you just is it soft and you just go through and then there's rocks and the water comes in and it crashes and there's a wave and the water comes up and it was just really um nice to sit there and be present in that moment and experience that as well because like everything's changed in my life really. Like I was married for five years and with someone for eight and a half and then, you know, you just up and left and obviously it's more complicated than that. Um, but I wouldn't have this opportunity now because I wouldn't have left my job. I wouldn't have moved home. I wouldn't have done all of these things. And I'm not thinking that teaching is going to be a walk in a park. God, no. Um, and I, I know that things will be challenging, but it, I'm really excited to have that tangible impact on people's lives, like the future and facilitate conversations with young people because they are the future and I think it's going to be really interesting but I'm apprehensive about study but I think overall for 2021 I haven't really set any goals like I have loose plans for things like crafting and uni but you know my only resolution for the year was to donate more plasma than I did last year and I think I got in 16 donations last year so I'd like to get 18 or 20 but also no pressure like if I get sick and I can't donate I can't donate that's okay so in this rambling which if you've stuck around for good bloody good on you because I probably wouldn't um my parting words which you probably didn't really come for either is I think let's try and embrace gentleness like it's still a bit of a dumpster fire like 2021 for me personally feels positive but 2019 fucking sucked and 2020 was pretty friggin average as well so I have to be positive because I can't think about any more bad stuff happening because I feel like I've had a pretty rough go of it but be gentle like okay you my mantra in life is don't be shit only you can only control your behavior and you, like you can only control the controllables and there are so many things right now we're in a state of flux and you can't control anything so if we can control our own behavior and make sure that we get therapy when we need therapy and we are kind to others and set appropriate boundaries and like if it's a dumpster fire at the end it's a dumpster fire at the end but if we look after ourselves then you know it's always 2022 all right none of you came for that i don't know if it'll stay if it does and you've stuck around thank you <laughs> oh dear my grandma's going to probably laugh at me. Um, have a beautiful week, everybody. I'm going to try, like, my loose goal is fortnightly. Um, if there's no knitting or crafting, there will be no no update. Um, but, yeah, if we can go with, like, fortnightly, that would be cool. I thought this was going to be 20 minutes. It's 40 now, almost 40. So we'll see what, <laughs> what remains after the editing's done. But, uh. 
that's my cue to eat lunch and maybe have a nap. Um, but yeah, stay safe, be kind, have fun with your knitting, and um, yeah, just much love. Bye.